Welcome into the In the Money podcast for KeenelandSelect.com. Tom Leach here along with Keeneland's director of simulcasting, Jim Goodman, to take a look at the Saturday card highlighted by the grade two Lexus Raven run for three-year-old fillies at seven furlongs. It's the ninth race on a 10-race card, so we're going to handicap that one as well as the late pick four for Saturday. Jim, give us your thoughts on what I thought was just a very tough handicapping challenge in the Raven run. Oh, you can make cases for a lot of horses, and this is uh, uh, a last chance for them to get in the Breeders' Cup, and I, that, that's why I'm, I went with just barely. Uh, thank you, Mary Lou, for Ramsey. I think they'd really like to, to get this filly out west to, to try Santa Anita, and she was really good in the Dogwood at Churchill Downs on seven furlongs. This is seven furlongs here. Uh, I think that she's coming into the race very well. Uh, the, the test, she only lost by two and a half to Sweet Reason and Misbehavior, who's in this field. Misbehavior would be my second choice, along with divided attention, the six for Terry McLaughlin. And Misbehavior came out of the um, the prior S stakes at Saratoga. It didn't turn out to be a great race because Stone Tastic came back and didn't run very well. So I'm not sure Misbehavior was that good in that race, but she came back and won the Charlestown Oaks by nine and three quarters. She just towered over those fillies. So she's she's really good right now. She likes seven furlongs. So I'm going to take Misbehavior as my second choice, but divided attention got my attention with that last race at Saratoga, seven furlongs, uh, Kieran McLaughlin, and that race came back as a key race with Shay Jolie, who gets back in this field, and Pretty Fancy also came back and won. So a key race when the three horses on top are, uh, are horses that came back, uh, get wins. Stop Charging Maria was in the race prior to that. So divided attention, I think, is moving in the right direction and might have a shot at an upset here. But uh, Thank you, Mary Lou, is my choice with misbehavior and divided attention behind those, and I would, I would key um, those three possibly in exotic wagers. I am going to take a shot with a horse similar to divided attention. Um, there are four horses in here that I, uh, that I think have a little bit of a class edge. Thank you, Mary Lou, misbehavior, Cassatt's coming out of graded stakes, and uh, Milam, I think, is, is going to be an overlay in here, and I almost went with Milam down on the inside because – Source going second off a layoff, but I, I ended up going to La Madrina, the 10, and I, and I can make a case for your six as well, but La Madrina is, runs for Shug McGahee. Is this a bold move to go from non-winners of two other than to a grade two stake? But uh, Shug is putting this horse in here. Castellano comes in to ride, and that that's the thing that kind of sealed it for me because if you've got a three-year-old filly who's improving, you take a shot here, it's it's moving toward the latter part of the year, and you take a shot. If it doesn't work, you haven't lost much. But if it's kind of just taking a shot, I don't know if Castellano comes in to, to keep the mount on this horse, and he does. So that's what kind of clinched it for me on La Madrina. It good, she could just as easily you know, just hit the board as well as win, but I think it'll be a decent price. So I'm going to try La Madrina, uh, use her with Milam, with Thank You, Mary Lou, Cassatt, and, uh, and Misbehavior. But I'm also going to use divided attention uh, with uh, the, all of those in my uh, pick four, which will start in the race in the seventh race. And so, obviously, using six horses in the fe- feature, I got to pare it down. So, I like uh, Kiyama, who's the favorite in the first leg. Clearly, got the best figures. Trainer excels in these turf sprints. The 14 Kitty Wine, if it uh, if it gets in, uh, is is worth a look for Eddie Keneally, I think, as well, and Corey Lannery, potent combo. So I would use that one as well uh, if it gets in. In the eighth race, uh, Joy Boy is a horse I picked earlier in the meet and scratch, so I'm going to take Joy Boy back. And um, I think there's some others in here that have some class, a class leader, a three-year-old second off the layoff, I think could be dangerous. Don't like how far he comes from out of it, but got some class. Bellerman, a uh, solid horse for Kenny McPeak. The five, General Ike, got really good this summer up at Delaware for Larry Jones. So I'm going to use all four of those. So eleven and fourteen by one six three five by the six I mentioned in the Raven Run. So that leaves me a single in the tenth race to keep the ticket at a manageable level, and it's going to be uh, Taglib for Kira McLaughlin and Shadwell Stable, and I think Le Peru should just be a perfect fit for this horse on the grass. I went back watched the last race and uh, really finished strong with a less than ideal trip and a bad start. So uh, I'm going to single Taglib uh, in the last leg. What about you? I'm going to single the 11 in the first race unless those also eligibles get in. So uh, Kiami is my pick. I think if you look at the main body of the race, uh, she's a standout with those. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, but if Kitty Wine gets in, if Sam Quick gets in the 13, 
uh, off that last race of Saratoga. She went five and a half furlongs at 25 to one. Eddie Keneally is a great trainer, and I think she's got a shot. And I think Fleet Encounter, the 15 for uh, Mark Christel, has a shot. So if any of those also eligible get in, I would expand my ticket. If they don't get in, I'm singling beyond me the, uh, the 11. And uh, in the second race, I'm going to take Joy Boy, your horse. I have no idea how to pronounce this. It's a French horse, and it, and it sounds like Horsted Kings, but I'm sure that's not correct. But it's a two-horse, four-ground motion in Joe Rocco, and the six-horse Bellarmine, the class horse for King of the Peak. I would go one, two, six in the second leg. In the third leg, the uh, Raven Run, I would use the two, four, five, six, ten, eleven. Thank you, Mary Lou. Pirate Strove Terrace, divided attention. Uh, Lama Green your horse and misbehavior. Go six deep there. And then the last race to keep it manageable, I would go Awesome Sky, the one. For Mark Tassie to glebe the horse that you picked, the three for Kieran McLaughlin. And Hoon, uh, kind of the unknown uh, horse that came back at Churchill, uh, Irish horse that uh, might be looking better second off the layoff in second North America. So I would use one, three, four in the last leg. So that's manageable, especially if you have to use one of the also eligible first leg. But uh, the Raven Run's a great race. I think it's uh, Lexus is one of our best sponsors, and it's a nice all of our mutual clerks have black and white hats on, advertising Lexus. It's a nice day out here for Saturday. Hope everybody can come out and enjoy the uh, the big weekend and get ready to beat LSU on Saturday night. And uh, I will say, I went back and looked at uh, the Thursday card, and I actually, uh, I think, uh, would have had the, the pick four on our podcast because Pyrite Mountain scratch, so you would get the favorite. And um, the, I think that was Rapscallion that won. And then right. uh, I had the next three legs, so... Um, uh, blind squirrel finally found an acorn. Um, way to back into one. I'm sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so we take take a, I, I, I was way too smart to actually bet it myself. Uh, didn't uh, wasn't having a good day, so didn't spend the extra money for the, to play the pick four. But uh, hopefully, some folks did and uh, had some good luck. And we're going to be back with the Sunday podcast for the Rude Riddle Dowager being the stakes race. And also, we're going to take a look at a couple of grade ones up at Woodbine on their Sunday card on our next edition of the In the Money podcast for KeelanSelect.com.